What's up guys? Christmas is around the corner and I am so excited. Not because of Christmas though, but because of this video topic, I promise. Facebook custom audiences. If you are not using them, you are leaving money on the table. Whenever you run a Facebook ad campaign, you want to target the people that are most likely to take the action that you want them to take, like purchase or download a free lead magnet or guide. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom audiences. I'm gonna walk you through what they're used for, how to create lookalike audiences. There is so much value in this short video. Pay attention, watch the end, and I'll see you inside. Hello, learning growers. I hope you are having an amazing day, an amazing week, an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is whatever time it is with you, I hope you are great. And I hope you're feeling just as Christmassy as I am. As you can see, I am rocking the Christmas tree right now. But right now, I'm here to talk about custom audiences, Facebook custom audiences. What are they? How do you use them? What's the benefit of them? What's the purpose of them? I created a post a few days ago in the Facebook ads group and asked, who wants a blessing on custom audiences and got a good response, people saying yes, and also people telling me what they knew and what they didn't know and what they wanted me to cover. So that's what this video is all about. So custom audiences, what are they? Well, a Facebook custom, when, when you come to advertising on Facebook, you've got different options. You've got the ability to target people based on interests, demographics, behavior. So somebody that lives in London that's interested in football and is age 24. Everyone knows that. That's the basis of advertising. One of the things around advertising a lot of people don't know about is custom audiences and, and using custom audiences, which is essentially targeting people that already know who you are or have already had a touch of your brand. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean by that somebody that has, had, has come into contact with you online or offline before. And I'm going to show you the different custom audiences and walk you through the different ones. So the first place that you want to come to is the ads manager. You all know the ads manager. And we head up over here to the hamburger menu, click on that, all tools, and head over to audiences under assets. And when you're there, it's going to bring you to this page. Now, you might not have any audiences here, so it might look slightly different, but you're going to be in the same place. And you'll see here, create audience, this big blue button. And when you click on that, you'll see custom audience. Now, the reason I'm taking you here already before I even explain what a custom audience properly is is because this gives you a good indication on what they are. Now, Facebook, I say they're, all, they're people that have already had a touch of your brand. Facebook describes them as people that have a relationship with your business. So they're existing customers or prospects or people that have interacted with you or your business on Facebook or other platforms. So let me go through these different ones. First of all, we've got customer files. So if you have an email list, hence why people say building a list is so, is so important. If you have an email list, whether that's a newsletter or a customer list, you can create what's called a customer file custom audience where you take that email list, you take that data, you upload it to Facebook and Facebook allows you to then target them with an ad. Now that's really cool and that's really uh, beneficial and exciting for things like Black Friday. Let's say you've got a list of a thousand customers that have purchased from you before and you go, mm, Black Friday, people that have already purchased from me might like this new product, for example. You can upload that list of customers to Facebook, target them with an ad with your Black Friday offer or another offer for another product. They've already purchased from you, so they already know who you are, they already trust you. By you uploading and sending and hitting them with an ad, strong chance they're going to purchase something from you. But also, not only that, it could be a, a list of leads. It could be your newsletter. You can just target them with an ad. So if someone has signed up to your newsletter, they're a lead, but they haven't purchased from you before, you can retarget them with an ad to try and get them to purchase from you. Very, very powerful. Website traffic. Now, you've probably all experienced this before. If you've maybe been to Amazon, looked at a pair of shoes, then had an ad follow you around the internet with that same pair of shoes. Simple, very simple to set up. You just need to add the Facebook pixel to your website and that allows you to then retarget anyone that has visited your website. I've done a, another training on the Facebook pixel. So either try find that in the group or leave a comment below and I'll send you a link to that training for you. Um, so website traffic, you can target people based on if they've been on your website in the last 24 hours all the way up to 180 days. App activity, so if someone's been on your app or taken specific actions on your app, you can retarget them. Offline activity, 
I'm not going to speak about this too much, but if someone's interacted with your business in store, then, then you can retarget them. And then engagement. Now, this is really exciting, and this is something that is going to be relevant to every single person in here, which is we can retarget people based on how they've engaged with our content and our pages. So we can retarget people that have watched our videos on Facebook or Instagram. So if someone's watched a video on Instagram, we can target them with an ad on Facebook. Lead form and full screen experience, maybe less, uh, and event, maybe a little bit less relevant to everyone here. Lead form, if you've created a lead form campaign on Facebook, you can retarget people based on their experience there. Full screen, so if you've created a canvas, you can retarget people that's been on the canvas and event, people that have uh, engaged with your event, i.e. they're coming or they're not coming, you can hit them with ads. But what's really exciting here is Facebook page and Instagram business profile, so we can retarget people that have engaged with our Facebook page. And that can be anything from visited your page, engaged with any post or ad, clicked on a call to action, sent a message, saved your page or your post. So that's really exciting because everyone here, if you're advertising on Facebook, has a Facebook page and you've probably had people interact with that page so we can create retargeting ads to them. So custom audiences, are, that's the different ones that you can have and, and I encourage you to start thinking about how you can utilize them in your advertising because if someone already has a relationship with you, has purchased from you, is a lead from you, has visited your website, read a blog, watched one of your videos, heck, even just looked at your Instagram business profile, they already know who you are. And depending on how warm they are, depending on how much of a relationship you have with that person, they hopefully trust you. And if they trust you, they're going to be much more likely to purchase from you. And if they're more likely to purchase from you, that means you're going to be able to get more purchases from your ads on Facebook at a better cost. So your cost per purchase, your cost per lead for a warm audience is going to be much better than targeting people based on interests, in theory at least, because the people already know who you are and so they're much more likely to take that action with you. And so when it comes to your advertising on Facebook, you really want to be utilizing custom audiences as much as you can. And, and you want to be think. this is why co creating content is so important. Getting on video, creating video content, writing blogs is so, so important. Building your email list, because if you're building your email list, you've got a larger customer file, custom audience that you can use for retargeting. If you are driving people to blogs, you're getting more traffic on your website. If you're creating video content on, on Instagram and Facebook, you can retarget more people from your video custom audiences. So let's say all year round, let's say you're a seasonal business and most of your sales come in December because you have a sale for Christmas. All year round, you're creating video content, you're creating blogs, you're building your email list. When you get to Christmas, you then will hopefully have a list of thousands or hundreds of people that are warm, they know who you are, and so as soon as you put an offer in front of them, they're gonna purchase from you. Which doesn't work if you're, if, if you're, which putting an offer in front of someone that doesn't know who you are is, is not likely to work. But if they're in this custom audience, they already know who you are, it's much more likely to work. So how do we create a custom audience? Well, first of all, click on create audience, custom audience, and let's just take, um, let's go engagement, and let's go video as an example. Choose content type. Well, we get to choose based on how long someone watches our video. So let's just say uh, we've created a video and we want to only target people that have watched pretty much the whole thing, so 95%. So we'll choose that and then we can go to choose videos and we can select one or as many videos as we want. So we can just go through this list and say, let, maybe all these videos are on a specific topic and we want to target people that have watched these videos on a specific topic with a specific ad. So all my videos on Facebook ads, I might want to target those people with a Facebook ads offer. However, if I had content around content marketing, I might want to select those content marketing videos and target them with a content marketing ad. So we select those videos and then we hit confirm. And then if I move myself back down here, and then what we get to do is we get to say in the, in the past however many days. So we can say one day up to 365 days. For video, like I said, with website, it's 180. And then we get to just name it. So let's just call it 95% uh, of videos in 365 days. And then click on create audience. Now that audience is going to then appear in here. You see 95% videos in 365 days. Now when we come to create a campaign, I click on create here, 
and let's just say we want to drive traffic to our website, hit continue. When it comes down to the audience selection part of the ad set, in here, this box here, custom audiences, if we click on that, we should then see 95% of videos in 365 days. Perfect. Now we can go and then filter even more. So we could say we only want to target people in London that have watched my videos and we can target that as much, we can get as specific as we want. You can do that, however, if it's a custom audience and it's a, an audience that of people that have maybe found your website through Google or just like just general website traffic, then I would I would recommend not filtering down unless you are a local business and you only work with people in local areas. I would suggest just because they've already shown an interest in you, I would suggest just leaving all this. But if you do need to get specific for certain reasons, then then you can do so. That's that's not a problem. So let me just go through some of the questions that I was asked here. Um, creating lookalike audiences, I'll talk about that right now. So custom audiences, uh, Michael, you're talking, you're not sure if it's the right audience. Well, if you're using custom audiences, that takes away the, the guesswork of that because you're essentially targeting people that have shown an interest and so they already know who you are. Um, Greg, I'm kind of going through that, I hope right now. So Alison, like I just said, you can create custom audiences, but you can then filter down on that. So the custom audience, you can't you can't edit that custom audience as the first audience because it's people that have shown an interest in you, uh, but you can then filter it once you create that campaign. And the last question here from Sally was a good question. So if I create a custom audience, watch more than three seconds, if you create a lookalike. So let's talk about lookalike audiences then. So that's essentially custom audiences 101. You create it in here, and then you'll find them here. Then when you go to create your campaign under the audience section, you'll have this box here, custom audience, and you can select that custom audience there. Now you can use this exclude feature as well. So if you wanted to exclude customers or people that have already purchased from you, just simply upload their email addresses or whatever it may be, create that custom audience, and then you can exclude them as well, which is really, really cool. Also with the website traffic custom audiences, you can get really specific on that. So it doesn't have to just be all website visitors. You can you can get more specific and target people based on specific pages on your site. Now it's not going to let me here because I don't have a, a, a live pixel. But if you click on here, you should see target people that have been on specific pages. So you might want to target people that have been on a specific blog post or maybe your add to cart but haven't purchased. You can then create that custom audience. Now, if we want to create a lookalike audience, a lookalike audience is essentially uh, where we tell Facebook or give Facebook, create a, a custom audience on Facebook. So let's just say our 95% of people, have, sorry, 95% video views in the last 365 days. So anyone that's watched 100% of our videos in the last year. If we want to create a lookalike of that, what that means is we're saying to Facebook, Facebook, there's 5,000 people that have watched my videos. Can you go and find more people like those people? So can you take that audience and go and find more people in the UK or the, wherever you are that match those characteristics? So I go here, I take that box, I click on actions, create lookalike, select my location. Let's just say it's the UK for now. And then here, this audience size, so you've got 1% to 10%. It's based on the population. I would always just start with the 1%. What this basically means is you get a larger audience, but it's less specific to that custom audience. So start with 1% and, and only go bigger if you run out of, if you've hit everyone in that audience. So create audience, and that will create your lookalike audience in there, perfect. And then we come into here, and we'll see that our lookalike audience would be there. If I refresh the page, we would find that our lookalike audience just comes up in that same custom audience section. Now, your lookalike audience is gonna be much bigger than your custom audience, and so you'll then probably want to filter down your lookalike audience based on location or demographics or interests. Unless you've got a budget that means you can go to that, it's gonna be 400,000 if you're in the UK. If you can reach that size, that's great, but if you're a local business, for example, then you are gonna to want to niche it down into specific areas. So the last question that got asked was, if we create these custom audiences and these lookalike audiences, do they update themselves or do they just stay? So with the video views, it's gonna update itself. With the website traffic, it's gonna update itself. Page engagement, it's gonna update itself. So you only need to create the custom audience and you only need to create the lookalike audience once. And then that's it, done. It'll just update itself. 
uh, if it's the email list that you're uploading, then obviously because you're uploading it manually, it's not connected to your email system unless you use like Mailchimp, then it can. Um, but that's gonna that's not going to so the the email list lookalikes you'll have to manually update, but all the other lookalikes will update. So you only you only create them once, which is great. And it means if you are uh, upload if you've got a list of leads and you're create you've created a lookalike of your people. Let's say your your website. If you create a lookalike of people that visited your website, and then you create an ad that's pointing people to your website, the more people go into your website, the better that custom audience is going to get, the better that lookalike is going to get, and your campaign should start to snowball in terms of the results getting better and better. So that's a quick overview of custom audiences, lookalike audiences. If you've watched this video to this point, please leave a comment to say whether this was useful, wasn't useful. If you have any follow-up questions, please let me know in the comments and I can either create another video on this or I can answer them. Uh, there and I'd love to see you guys start to use custom audiences. You've spent this time to watch this video to this far. I want to see you actually use these in your current campaigns. And because a lot of times your custom audiences are going to be smaller, like you might have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand people in there, you don't have to spend a huge amount of budget. You could you could go one pound or one dollar, two dollars per day to just target your custom audience. And, and I'll actually just leave you on a very, very powerful point, which is if you create, imagine you created a, a custom audience of people that have purchased from you before. You then create a lookalike audience of that. You're essentially telling Facebook to go and find people like your perfect customers. Facebook's doing all the heavy lifting for you. You don't need to go and do much audience research because they're already doing it for you.